What's up everyone? It is Friday, May 29th. We're going to start this video off this weekend with checking out the babies and letting them out into the backyard with the big girls. Now what I plan on doing guys is I am going to get more fencing and I'm going to start from this post and I'm going to go all the way across to the, the other fence. And this whole area is now going to be open to the chickens again. Look at it. It's overrun. It's going crazy. They're going to have that area. I am going to close this area off eventually and fill it in with prairie seed. A good poultry mix that has a lot of clover and different things in it. Dandelions. And we're going to replant this. Let it grow as the chickens tame this part of the area. So that's what you can do in your yard if you have the availability. You can do different sections and you section this off, they live out here, and now all this stuff that's just dirt will now become their new grasslands. So anyway, for the last week, that gate's been open. Day in, day out. The babies are starting to go in with the bigger girls. They're still not sleeping in the coop. They're still sleeping over there. Not Blue. Blue is sleeping in there, but the other babies are on the top of their cage. But in the mornings, they all come out together. All day long, they're together. I mean, they're really starting to coexist. So now we're going to open up the next feature, which is this gate into the whole backyard. Okay, so we open the door. Obviously, the older ones know exactly what to do, but the babies, they don't even know yet. So, once they realize that gate's open, they're really going to be able to just run around. I'm going to be out here watching, obviously. What are you girls doing? Let's go see the rest of the yard. Come on. Now, <laughs> Blue's like, nah, I'm just dust bathing. Look who's coming. Hi, pretty girls. What do you think about it? Oh, yeah. Go run around. See what's up. Oh, look. You found the bamboo forest. Yo, what's happening, guys? It's Saturday, May 30th. Today, this weekend... Wow, it is bright. Whoa, that sunshade is bright on my wife's car. It is, like, blowing up my eyes. Okay, guys. So, last weekend, you saw that I patched the roof with that tar. Right after I did that, um, later on that day, it poured. And I tell you what, it didn't work. The water was still leaking through. So I had a roof guy come out. He came out on Thursday. And um, we're getting it repaired. They're coming June 10th. They're going to do a 6 by 6 area in that, in that spot. And they're going to repair it for me for now. I can't afford the $11,000 to get my whole roof done. And the guy said my roof ain't that bad. Just that spot. 1200 bucks. I mean, it is what it is. I need it done. It's going to only cause more damage. Also, another issue we had was we started seeing termites coming out of our bedroom wall. Not like coming out of the wall like crazy, but we saw a few termites. I had Terminex come Thursday as well. And yes, I do have dry wood termites. Not the underground ones, but the dry wood ones, whatever that means. Luckily, I don't have to tent my house and be gone for three days and move everything out or nothing. They're going to come today. Actually, he should be pulling up any minute, going up into the attic up there, and they do a, a treatment. They spray the whole attic up there because that's where they start. Then they go out and they spray all the soffits outside that have the vented areas in them. And for two years... I have a plan to where they will come out if I ever see any activity and knock it out for me again for free. So that was another $1,300. I mean, huh, it never ends. But anyway, so the roof will be fixed in two weeks. Terminex is coming today to get rid of these damn termites. And guess what? This is what the termite poop looks like. You see all that? I have been wondering what this is. I clean this stuff off all the time and all the time it comes back. So when I showed them that, it's all over the place. Look. So that's termite poop. When I showed him it, he's like, yep. 
They burrow little tiny holes in your ceiling. They pop out, they poop, they go back in. These little sun guns, man. But anyway, they're about to be done. And hopefully that termite poop is about to be done because I'm sick of cleaning it all the time. All right, let's show you another thing I've been working on the last couple of days. Oh yeah, getting off of work and getting some stuff done, guys. Check it out. I skim coated that soffit. I skim coated this wall all nice and remember it was all ripped up and stuff. It's all nice and smooth now. Skim coated all of this area. And I just got done primering it this morning. So now, and I caulked it all in. So now I'm waiting for the caulk to dry so I can paint it. And then the wall section of my, oh, and up there, I painted that initially, but then I saw some weird ridges and stuff. So I scraped it all, I, I skim coated it, primered it again. Then all this part in the kitchen will be done. Okay, just got done second coating the kitchen wall over here and the soffit. Oh yeah. All that skim work and smoothing it out really made the walls look nice. So, anyway, painting for this weekend is done. I still have more to do. I have to do underneath, I have to do the ceiling, and of course over here we're doing backsplash, so still things to do, but that's a bulk of it. All right guys, man, that was exciting watching that space rocket take off just now. Two American astronauts in it, Elon Musk privately owned space rocket. That was really cool. That was actually... I got nervous for them, man. I was like, man, I hope it doesn't blow up or nothing. So they're up in space right now. It's looking good. So I don't know. That was amazing. Anyway, let's go out to the garden. I want to show you what I want to do today now that I'm done painting anyway. All right, guys. So remember those runners that I planted in these pots right here? They're looking really good. They're growing good. So I think we're going to cut them off and we're going to replant them. And look at all these runners I have here. This is nuts. That's a lot of runners, so I'm going to repot some. See the roots already starting? So I'm going to repot a couple of those as well. That way we have some more strawberry plants. And what we're going to do with them, like I said, that's kind of nice. It looks cool, but it's just not enough space. So what I'm going to do is clean out all the leaf debris around the Barbados cherry bush. And we are going to fill it in. I just got a few things from Lowe's, a raised bed soil, miracle Grow. I know, I don't really use miracle Grow that much, but that one is supposedly organic. So, a hundred, yeah, it says right there, 100% organic. And then I just got one little bag of the potting mix moisture control, and of course a black cow. Plus I have my peat moss down there. So we'll mix all those together. First thing I'm going to do is clean all this out. We're going to mix it all together and layer it in there. And then we're going to cut those two off the mother plants and get them planted in the ground. And we'll start a couple more in some pots. Okay, so there we go. I took all the leaves out of there. I kind of turned it around, dug it up a little. Same on that side. Now let's just add, you know, half a bag of each of those into each section. All right, so we got all the soils mixed together. It's all nice and loose. Last thing we're going to do is put some Dr. Earth Pure Gold Organic and Natural Hand Crafted Blend of All Purpose Fertilizer. It smells good too, guys. It is like, it's almost like grain. Smells really good. It has this nice, I don't know, like green smell to it, I guess. So I'm just going to spread it around over the top and mix it into the first couple of inches of soil. And beings, we have so many runners. Here's another one. I got tons of them. I clip this one off the plant. You see those little roots already? Those little red guys right there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see... I'm going to see if this will grow without the mother plant with the roots 
that size. It might die, but I just want to experiment with it. And we'll see what happens. So that one is off of the mother plant. The other ones I'm going to pot up are going to be on the mother plant still. Okay, so once you put your runners in the little pots like that and anchor them in, to, when they're attached to the mother plant, they say to wait like three to six weeks for them to develop a good root system. So I looked at my other ones, check this out. Oh, actually here's one I just potted just now, or just put in some dirt. That's still attached to the mother plant. Here are the ones that we did like three weeks ago. This one actually made a runner and another strawberry plant is in there. But if you look at the bottom, you can see some little white roots going there. So I know that these things have some roots at least going down that far. So they should be good to go. Here is the one that we cut off the mother plant and just set in there by itself. I want to see if that works. A nice little experiment. And we have more. What I might do is take one of these and just put it into the ground and see if that works. Because as you can see, that has little red roots on it as well. So, you know, we're just experimenting, see what works. Look at all these runners, though. <laughs> these things are producing some plants, man. I tell you what. And it's cool. This first year, I wanted to get some more runners. That way, I have more strawberry plants. So you only have to buy a couple of them, and then you can just harvest the runners. So let's cut off those two from the mother plant, and let's get those in the ground. Yeah, so check it out. It made another runner into here. That one we are not going to use, though. We're going to take it out, but it does have some good roots. Maybe we'll just throw it. It does have some good roots, though, so let's just throw it right into the soil. All right, so let's cut this runner off right here. Okay, so it does have a couple little roots. Let's get it in the soil. You don't want to bury them deep. Do not go over the crown, okay? So bury them pretty shallow, like right up above the root system. Let's put this little guy right here in the corner. This little finger size hole. Get those roots in there. And pack it down and we'll see what happens. First strawberry plant is in the ground. Oh, and you see this piece of runner already starting? Let's get it off of there. We don't want that on there. We want it to have energy to grow. So there we go. Let's do the other ones. Okay, there we go guys. I got them all mulched in with the leaves that I took out of there. So we did one that made a runner into one of the pots and started getting some roots. These two are the ones that we potted up three weeks ago and they have roots. That one is one that I just cut off the mother plant and, and anchored it in like I normally do with those in the pot. But I anchored it in there just to see what happens. Over here we have one in a pot not on the mother plant. This one's on the mother plant, anchored in. This one's on the mother plant, anchored in. And this one's on the mother plant, anchored in. So we got a few more plants growing. That way we can add them to the bed. Okay, so there is the new strawberry patch, guys. Here in about three weeks, we'll be able to bring those other transplants over here, or the runners, plant them in there, They'll all start making their own runners, and hopefully, what I picture in my head is a bunch of strawberry plants with a bunch of strawberries and some Barbados cherries as well. So that would be a nice little fruit area. We'll see what happens. That's it, guys. That is a wrap. I painted my kitchen today. I did this. I had the Terminex guy come and get my termites treated. Got some stuff done. But for now, it's hot. I'm sweaty. But we got strawberries planted. See? You can make your own strawberry plants. How easy. How easy. So anyway, cheers, guys. Have a good rest of the weekend.